The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in all its need with the life that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading of the good news is found in the book of Exodus, the 16th chapter. The whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If we only had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out of, into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread, rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions on or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as, Israel, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came, upon, came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there was a surface of, in the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw this, they said to one another, What is it? And they didn't know what, what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God. Word of life. Please join me in reading responsively the Psalm 78. So God commanded the clouds above and upon the doors of the heaven. Upon the feet and giving them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. A God provided for them food enough. Lord caused the eastern to blow and powerfully led out those of wind. Raining down flesh upon them like dust and flying birds like the sand of the seas. Letting them fall in the midst of the wind about the dwellings. So the people ate and were well filled, for God gave them what they craved. The second reading comes from Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling of which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to, to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and the Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all, given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended into the, on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it is said he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were, this, were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitfulness scheming. 
But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way unto him who is the head unto Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in the building itself up in love. Word of God. Okay. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, You are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me, never thirsty. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Okay, first I beg of you an indulgence and a do-over. I came here a little bit twitter-pated. So, once again, Vivian, happy birthday. Betty, happy anniversary. Dave and Connie, happy anniversary. Lois and Jerry. Deanna, I think I got everybody, yes? And Amelia, who likes to say happy birthday. So, did you ever encounter someone 
who possessed a powerful, mystical, and indescribable quality, a person whose appearance in your life was so extraordinary that you were certain that they had come into your life for a reason. Not one of those everything happens for a reason reasons, but something truly significant, the sort that doesn't come along every day, a once in a lifetime event. And in that moment, you have so many questions swirling around in your head. Your thoughts and your wonderings take many forms, but they can all be distilled down to two big questions. Who are you? And why are you here? And these are probably the same questions you ask of yourself on a regular basis, aren't they? Who are you? And what are you doing here? And whether you're asking about yourself or about the aforementioned enigmatic person, for the sake of our sermon, let's call him Jesus, shall we? The second question is really, what do you want me to do? We're a doing society, uncomfortable with sitting still and ever needing to be productive. So much so that that first question, who am I, is often answered in terms of our career. Our job becomes our identity. So it's not surprising that when Jesus comes along so mysterious, like one of the prophets, yet more than a prophet, a holy man yet so much more holy than the ones we find in the synagogues or the temple, When one such as this comes along, the natural impulse is to wonder what he wants from us. What do you want me to do? Now, to be fair, the crowd that followed Jesus to Capernaum might have been motivated by desire for more bread, and maybe they were thinking about what Jesus could do for them. Jesus does seem to suggest that this is the case. You are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. But you get the sense that Jesus does know why they really came, even if they do not, or even if they are afraid to speak aloud what they really want, what they really want to know. Who are you, Jesus? And what do you want of us? And their fixation on doing persists despite all of the hints that Jesus drops. Work for the bread that endures for eternal life, he says. And rather than hearing the part about enduring an eternal life, they hear the word work. Aha, finally, something we can do to earn this reward. But Jesus puzzles them again. Not your work, children, but God's work. And this is God's work that you have faith. Not not content to believe that faith is a gift, though, they ask Jesus for signs to make them believe. Signs, signs, everywhere signs. Blocking out the scenery. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the signs? Last week, We heard about Jesus feeding the multitudes with just a few loaves and fishes. It's an oft-told story, a story often referred to as the miracle of the loaves and fishes. But that word miracle is one of our own creation. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke speak of these feeding events quite matter-of-factly. They don't say they're miracles. John whose gospel we read today, uses the word sign 17 times in his gospel, starting with Jesus turning the water to wine at the wedding of Cana. And each of these events is a sign, something that points to something or to someone else, that points to the one who stands before them, and yet the crowd tries to look beyond him, for something to do. Are you going to give us a sign like Moses did when the Hebrews were fed in the desert with manna? 
manna. The Hebrew word literally means, what is it? This wonder that appeared each morning, it's something that scholars have tried for centuries to explain as some naturally occurring phenomenon. The Jewish people, however, were content to dwell in the mystery, content to accept it for what it was. The great, what is it, sent down from heaven. And now Jesus stands before the crowd. Jesus, the great, who are you, promises them that it is true bread which his Father gives. Note the present tense here. This is bread that God continues to give today. The gift that keeps on giving. This true bread from heaven, Jesus says, the bread that endures and gives life to the world, is Jesus himself. The great who are you is the great I am. I am the bread of life. And what must you do to receive this bread? What must you do to gain eternal life? You need only believe. And lest you worry that even faith is too much to ask of you, Jesus assures you that your belief in the good news, your belief in the good news, that too is the work of God. You need do nothing more than open your hands to receive the Lord's bounty. When we teach our confirmands about Holy Communion, we remind them that the bread, the body of Christ broken for you, is a gift. And gifts are not taken, but rather received with an amen or a thank you or a I do believe or maybe with just a smile and a nod. (sighs) Little confession here. I recognize that for some of you this might be a disappointing sermon. For I'm not going to give you a call to action. I cannot tell you what to do for today's message. Today's good news is that Jesus is the self-proclaimed bread of life broken for you to soothe your brokenness and to forgive your sins. And it is not what you must do, but rather what God has done, what God does today and tomorrow and all the tomorrows to come. Salvation comes from God and your faith, your faith comes from God. Now, if that faith calls you to serve your neighbor, calls you to do something, that faith will manifest as prayer that Christ transform your heart and free you to do God's will. But whatever you do or do not do, you can be certain that your salvation, the victory of the Lamb who was slain, has already been won for you. And there is nothing you can do to change that. So who are you? You are redeemed children of the Most High God. And why are you here? Why am I here? You are here because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you beyond all measure. Isn't that enough? I think it's enough. I think it's everything.